Welcome to another edition of XFeed. Apparently, the YouTube link is not working, so I have no idea what to do about that. Well, I guess we'll figure that out later. Today, we're going over more FUD around ApeCoin. Why is that on my timeline every single day? Blast. Apparently, they're giving out more gold. Everybody be farming Blast. The Ordinals narrative, people were really bullish on it, and now I'm seeing some FUD on the timeline. It's not even Friday. There's all these rumors, too, that the banks in Cuba collapsed. You can't find any news on it. That's a little strange, don't you think? I'm gonna talk briefly about the Metaverse Roundtable that happened today as well. If you're excited for this, as usual, if you can give me a big thumbs up wherever you're watching, would greatly appreciate it. This is XFeed, my name is Schiller. Let's get in to the topics of the day. Banger, banger. All right. So <laughs> if you remember way back in the day, there was this thing called Sneaky Vampire Syndicate. And how it got big was the fact that it was uh, apparently a uh, NFT project that had the artist of Board Ape Yacht Club. Now, we had a couple of other collections like uh, the Goat Lodge project that was also apparently the same artist for it these things were going for a pretty penny back in the day right now trading at 0.02 uh we have recently changed to passive staking so until all vampires are unstaked holder count is incorrect Twenty-two thousand ethereum for these the last post about it at a time when again they had almost a hundred thousand followers uh just kind of scrolling down here was back in december of 2023 so really not that long ago but it was a hundred dollar cash prize for i guess some fantasy pool not exactly sure but again one of those things that had a whole bunch of hype that I just kind of feel went to the wayside. Now, another one that I wanted to highlight here is Panda Golf Squad. And this was a collection that I actually reached out to to interview. And then they ended up completely rugging the project. They, again, very similar to the Board Ape style, had some different backgrounds and whatnot. But uh, these got some traction amongst all of it. Nothing came of it. And then Vox Adeus, we hinted at this yesterday. Yo, Pickle, what's going on? How are you doing, boss? And... How many things tried to do something with Sandbox and because Sandbox took so long or wasn't ready or the speculation around Sandbox just kind of ruined everything? Kind of tough to see, but for Voxadeus here, 3D NFT collectibles, if you check out the website, they did have things that looked kind of cool, but it was like these voxelized style. If you remember, there was like this super rare one that had a bunch of tokens or something associated with it that people were trying to get. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. You guys might, but there was, uh, seeing how quickly these ones load, a multitude of different designs and character traits, and they were supposed to do something within these specific games for Sandbox. But, you know, going back to the page here, trying to see their pin tweet was from July of 2023. And uh, same with their last post. So I guess that one is up and done. Maybe they come back when Sandbox picks up again. Not entirely sure. Now, do you remember Desperate Ape Wives? This was like a derivative collection of board apes, and they were doing a, uh, I guess, like female variation of it. But these things are actually still active. A collection of 10,000 unapologetic female apes. And uh, scrolling down here, February 28th. Okay, we have some shares again back on February 14th. Okay, I guess they're still doing something, but this was a collection that was kind of more of the derivative notion of this. Now, we're sticking with the FUD here just for a minute, so bear with me. But uh, Beanie here, but it's not the Beanie you would think of. It's B-E-N-E. -E. And they said, Today, unfortunately, I have to publicly call out the founder of Motion Markets to take responsibility for his brand, Typical Friends. The associated collections, Invisible Friends, and Garbage Friends, as well as the associated community of collectors and supporters. So at a point, there was a time when it just seemed like the... The correct thing to do was creating a second collection. And this, of course, a lot of the collections early on did whatever Bored Apes did and was kind of hoping, hey, ho hopefully we have the same success with it. And I remember some of the prices for these things were just going insane. Invisible Friends, they had like a charity one that sold for like a million dollars. Now you look back and you're thinking, okay, were they trying to go for some kind of tax write-off? They made these things called Garbage Friends, et cetera, et cetera. But quickly reading through this post, not going to go through all of it. Last year, I passionately collected Invisible Friends and Garbage Friends. 
I collected over 30 Invisible Friends and over 100 Garbage Friends. And again, Invisible Friends were expensive as hell. And I had a lot of fun with this. The community was healthy and active. In January 2024, things changed suddenly when dis uh, drastic personnel decisions were made. At Typical Friends, the closest circle was affected. And Typical Friends here apparently had 20,000 followers. I honestly don't even remember that collection ever existing, but of course, I just kind of see what I see on my timeline. What followed was seemingly a seemingly endless radio silence from all typical things. The founder was in hiding, the Discord community was severely restricted, and the FUD of any kind was not stopped. The community was left to its own devices. Now, we're not going through all of this, but just like, man, it's crazy to watch the insanity that really happened before and why I think there is such uh, pessimistic uh, takes around everything within Web3, because again, a lot of these things just ended up not coming to fruition. Now, Adam here did something that was very interesting where he actually got his daughter to create a collection. And this is what he had to say about it. And I'm kind of like scratching my head on why this was even posted. But anyway, getting real for a minute. Sometimes the space space makes me angry. I worked for months with my little girl to create her project. It was something special we did together and I've never marketed it as anything other than a seven year old's taco art. Yet just because it didn't sell out immediately, I start getting DMs and messages with people upset that they can't immediately flip their $30 into 50. Bro, it's NFTs. What do you expect to happen? Like, I, we, we're in this space every single day. We see when deliveries happen, it's typically funded to the ground. Of course, people are going to freak out and be like, why can't we flip it? Even if you scream from the heavens that this is just some kind of art. You know what I mean? Yo, Buffalo Space, you bought some of those? Hell yeah. People telling me I have to cut the supply, that I should sweep the floor, that I should pay for marketing, respectfully F off. Now, what's hilarious about this is he's saying F off, but like a post like later in the day, he's like, so we're going to make a decision on cutting the supply. I and it's like a complete 180 from this. And it's like, ah, ah, K did. I have nothing bad to say about Adam, but I thought it was kind of funny, the trip of face. And again, it's just like, guys, you, we, we know this happens. We know this happens. Now, Sarah Sparky here is also doing uh, kind of an art drop here on Foundation. And I guess it's $100, but they said, eh, that said, if $100 is a stretch for you, please don't buy it. Times are tough. And it's funny thinking of some of the generative artists that kind of just like put stuff out there and charge a whole lot and don't really think of the price point or anything to that um but cool there for uh sparky for her uh well this is a part of like the women weapons collection but it's like for art if that makes sense but anyway if you know you know uh, and if you're wanting to check that out then there you go bill noble posted this i didn't read the article because why would we do your own research you know what i'm saying <laughs> But he says, an institution is short GME and is caught. This could lead to the biggest hedge fund problem since LTCM in 1998. Public servants too busy attacking crypto to have proper reporting of outsized positions. They should try doing their job. In this article headlined, hedge funds to get new SEC mandates for reporting short sales. We've seen a GME halted like 40 times yesterday there was a ton today there's a whole bunch as well apparently gme was like down like 30 percent today after absolutely mooning recently and i mean there's just like a lot of questions about what's going on with this market but liquidity is flying and we'd love to see that some bad news here apparently red lobster is shutting down every time we go on the timeline again the world is looking pretty crazy what happens with these markets does the printer turn back on now this is a copy pasta but i'm gonna read it nonetheless nfts are dead it's all about ordinals now ordinals are dead it's all about social fi now social fi is a scam meme coins are still where it's at notice a trend here people will say whatever is best for them at the time opinions change on a dime if you believe in something just stay in that and wait for the attention to come back around do you agree that there is kind of this narrative jumping within the space but of course I'm just sitting pretty and commentating on things. I am where I am. You're where you are. If you want to order me a Papa John's, yo, you let me know, baby. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, bro. Here's another thing <laughs> that I feel is very, very accurate, okay? So uh, Crypto Cred is saying part of the reason there's so much disagreement regarding where we are uh, cyclically cyclically is because returns have been so unevenly distributed. 
What the hell does he mean? Additionally, a lot of pr previous cycle signposts have been absent and or entirely invalid. So number one, the conventional risk curve trade of Bitcoin to ETH to large caps to mid caps to, you know, the uh, bottom feeders has been unprofitable. Barbell portfolio of BTC plus memes has dominated degree. If you check out the Bitcoin chart comparatively to a lot of other ones, Bitcoin been mooning over the past little bit. You know, it's, you know not, not as much so. Number two here, ETH and Bitcoin has been remarkably weak, whereas historically it has benefited from a risk on environment. This is also spilled over to ETH, L1s and L2s proxy trades being suboptimal. Crypto is a casino thesis has been captured by meme coins on Sol versus Cycles Casino was NF sorry versus previous Cycles Casino was NFTs on ETH. Guys, remember when NFTs on ETH were the cycle? And, yo, and we were, the, yo, Buffalo Space, we were there, Distress Pickle, we were there. Do you remember the glory days? And we're still sitting here like, are these ever coming back? Oh man, how great is that? Meme coins have been consistently leading and rotating from that sector has been costly. Whereas memes pumping has historically been an indicator of being late in the cycle. And that's something that's kind of weird because I remember seeing that before. And we've just seen like memes for the most part kind of rip, obviously come down a little bit, but still very interesting looking at the sentiment across the board. Now, 7,999 Bitcoin, otherwise basically $500,000 uh, US went from Coinbase to an unknown new wallet. Hedge funds, crazy corporations out there being like, yo, we bought 2 billion Bitcoin. That was on the news today. That's crazy. Some big players coming in. What does that mean? Square Enix confirms layoffs in the US and EU with new restructuring plan. Again, Square Enix does have an NFT game, Web3 game that they are working on, wondering if that's going to be affected at all. But we're seeing Red Lobster. This, uh, it's, you know, job market is looking very interesting. So let's talk about what Grail has to say here. They say, what happens when you have a monetary system where there are no goods and where there are no services in which to spend that currency, where the only use of that currency is to trade said currency for another currency? Nothing good. This is a state I see persistent with most, almost all, in fact, Web3 games with the token right now. A token is rushed to market solely to capture positive market conditions but with absolutely zero token utility and zero token sinks. This was my biggest problem. ApeCoin ended up launching, and what did we have to spend that on? The fact that they made a utility where if you needed like 10,000, I think it was 500 ApeCoin attached to an ape to be able to stake it, and then being able to like redecorate and get some like fancy looks within the heavy metal game. There was some recharging features within... Uh, the Legends of Mara game, and it just, man, like, it, there was really nothing for it. And we can go through a whole bunch of other tokens, but that's probably the one that a lot of you guys might be familiar with or uh, can recognize. And, it, and it's wild to think that just, like, how many different games have gone that approach and why I feel like all the time on my timeline we have everybody... Uh, hyping up these tokens and like I read them and I'm like I have no idea why in the world that I would go and buy that token right now may maybe maybe something changes where you end up playing the game or get excited about something but the only reason for the most part is because you see the price go up and you think oh yeah that's gonna potentially go more Launching a token without utility is a good way to damage your long-term ecosystem, which a lot have. If you have zero utility for said token, then the only utility is to sell that token. Combine this with the aggressive inflation from low circulating supply on launch, where the supply will 10x over the next few years. Of course, it's a given that's the only direction the token price will trend is down, leaving behind a trail of broken dreams and unhappy holders who only lose money buying on the secondary markets. I can think of a few examples here, and so we list Ape, Topia, Shrapnel, Wild, Gala, Cypher, for Atlas and Alluvium. Are any of these your bags? Do you feel, you know, you know, do you feel kind of the similar sentiment? Some of these older coins have been so destroyed, I just don't see how they can be brought back to life. Now that I'm not really sure about, because I do think that there is a uh, renew on life, as you can see with Blast and especially Wolf Game, that has gotten a lot of attention. So there is definitely things you can do to get the attention back to the same heights they were. Ah. I don't know. It's probably easier to just relaunch a new token than deal with two plus years of slaughter and bad sentiment. 
especially with the games that raised money years ago when there is still no token utility and no game. New launches fall into this too, where there is zero utility for the token. I even have bags here for some of these. We'll likely have a lot more coming in the next few months. And they're talking about Portal, Mojo, GMRX, Bubble, and most upcoming games. You can honestly insert almost every single Web3 game here right now, so I'm not playing favorites. I understand we are still early and Web3 gaming is growing, but that's the state we are in now. Oh, yeah, Buffalo. One thing I realize is that I have a big bag of literally everything. Yo, this man heard the term being diverse. And it's just, he's got his hand in every single cookie jar. That's crazy, bro. But listen, hey, if you're excited about different things, that is good. Okay, so this is something that came across the timeline. And, uh, you know, it's one of those like panic headlines where it says the financial banking system in Cuba has completely collapsed. Cubans woke up to learn their bank accounts have been emptied. There is no cash at ATMs. Okay, so I tried looking for this. And I like I couldn't really see anything. And I don't know if maybe there's something where it's just not being published online, if that is just like a clickbait article, because I've seen some other posts regarding it. But the one thing that I did find was back in April, specifically the 27th of this year, was long lines form and frustration grows as Cuba runs short on cash. So that's an interesting headline, which makes me think, OK, that's like kind of recently. Maybe these headlines are true. And if that's the case, what are the ramifications for you know, people reacting to knowing, hey, that happened somewhere else. Is there anything that we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen where we are? Now, speaking of ApeCoin, if AIP 417 passes, I will dump all my ApeCoin. I voted against this cash grab, and that's from Lou Fish. We do love the fish. But every day I wake up and there's FUD about some kind of proposal for the ApeCoin DAO. Now, AI sorry, AIP 417. That's the one where they're asking for 2.75 million ape. Talk about wrecking sentiment <laughs> for things potentially people don't want. And apparently it was supported by the Animoca ecosystem. So as you can see here, maybe this is your first time visually seeing it, but there's been a lot of complaints about the ApeCoin DAO because certain um, individuals companies, what have you, have a ton of power within the votes. And as you can see here, for Mochaverse, they have 6.3 million ape, which is unbelievably more than a whole bunch of others. The Sandbox here having 582,000 for it. Uh, the founder of, or the CEO of Animoca Brands here, Yatsui, I believe is him here, 890,000 ape. And this was for, I guess, building out different things within the ecosystem. I think it was the one where they were like going abroad. People had some complaints about them setting up booths and flights and all this stuff being like multi millions of dollars, and it just didn't make any sense. Oh, sorry, that was that was this one. So I don't actually know what four seventeen is, but for for four nineteen, that's the one with the with the blockchain events for two point one million dollars specifically. Again, the other one was like two million ape. This one two point one mil. Like I, it's just absurd amounts of money to put into these different things. But again, I guess if a company comes out of it and revenue goes back to the DAO, it's good. But again, kind of fishy stuff all the time. Okay, this guy's bragging about being up seven figures. Why do we have this all over the timeline when people are like, I'm just gonna share that I have a million dollars. Like I don't know if these people are docs but i just feel like it would be awkward as hell to brag about this unless you're actively searching some kind of deals with certain exchanges about trading because obviously we've seen where people with large followings have gotten those kind of deals but i don't know i feel like it, you know just give me the give me the heebie jeebies on that and speaking of the exact same thing c7 here is saying just because i casually dumped 14 board apes for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a few weeks ago doesn't mean i don't love apes i got a lot of stick from a lot of people on this but i profited one hundred ninety thousand dollars in 24 hours everybody's just spewing on the timeline how much they make it's just it's wild to me i don't understand it now maybe another thing here that we don't really understand is pudgy penguins have this kind of side collection yes there's little pudgies but then there's also these uh rogs and it's it's like a little fishing rod and apparently one of them got licensed okay i don't know if it's like toothbrush brand 
or what, but <laughs> I think that's hilarious because these things are literally a fishing rod that don't look that different. All right, big news out of Binance here. You don't have to do anything within trading. You can just now copy influencers if you trust them. You asked and we listened, says Binance, introducing spot copy trading on Binance. Replicate strategies of Binance top tr top traders in a few clicks. So as we just highlighted, a couple of different people are now on their timeline. Mean, they've always been on the timeline, but you know, they're saying, hey, look how great of a trader I am. We've done all these amazing things, and now you can go out and directly copy them. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how it works. You probably have to be partnered with Binance, but holy guacamole. And Adam Hollander has seen, seen all these posts about how ordinals are dead. Yeah, when people think of digital ownership and collectibles, no one's going to care about the ones on Bitcoin. Just because our tiny echo chamber of degenerate gamblers move temporarily to a new shiny thing doesn't make... Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. But Wab here making a good point saying, I don't think people think ordinals are dead. It's more the fact that ordinal maxis were spewing falsehoods and misinfo about ETH and proclaiming it's dead. And denial of facts that ETH heads pointed out early on, like the disgusting amount of MEV extracting from the ecosystem. Now... I never really got into the ordinals thing a whole lot. We tried to highlight some of the collections. Obviously, Node Monkeys went crazy. Uh, Bitcoin Puppets went crazy. We had Ink on BTC do insanely well as well. And uh, it's just funny that these narratives do change. And the, the fun part of this, if you're tuning in for the first time, is on the YouTube channel, might be the easiest to find this. If you go to the live tab, we have almost every single day, Monday through Friday, since the beginning of this year. And you can see the narrative shift on the timeline. And it is one of the most fascinating things. I've been trying to keep the streams a little bit shorter as of late. And if you maybe want to watch it like 1.5 or 2x speed, you'll be like, wow, does the narrative ever change? Now, a quick little plug as well. If you guys are enjoying this and you're wanting to hear a little bit about real world assets, is the hype real? Is it all fake? I'm talking with a whole bunch of experts. And if you check in the YouTube description below, it's RWA segments. Would love for you to check that out. Great video here by Nick. I'm not sure if this was the actual person who created this video because it's been all over my timeline, but a lot of people <laughs> potentially think that this is the way blockchain gaming is. And obviously that's not the case for anybody that's seen this, but it is kind of a, a funny uh, video where there's just constant transactions whenever you make a move, whenever you do anything. Obviously not, that's not the case, but very, very creative video making it nonetheless. So we've had weird things coming out of Europe regarding crypto. Sometimes they're like, we're banning it. Sometimes they're like, hey, this is the greatest thing ever and we're going to accept it. But Robinhood, again, big player within this space, launches Solana staking in Europe. Odd that I've seen on my timeline a little bit of people trying to say, oh, for the regulations and potential hiccups within crypto, staking is going to get attacked. Maybe. But when some of these big players end up offering it, it's going to be harder for them to retract certain things. What's wrong with Web3 Gaming? Telling me I need to go onto this exchange, link bank account, KYC, buy L1 coins, then transfer to a wallet, swap some game tokens on a DEX, then bridge to an L2 to buy NFTs and store on another game in a game wallet to use. People had an uprise trying to get them to link their PlayStation network. And if you haven't seen, there was a game that recently came out and they just forced people to uh, link their PlayStation name. And for whatever reason, People absolutely lost their minds. So totally agree that there is still not really, for the most part, a seamless onboarding experience. We've seen a lot of collections, protocols, et cetera, announce that they've partnered with Payment Rails, but I feel like we just don't see it on the timeline as much as I thought about what they can do. Now, yesterday, when we were going through the different marketplaces at the end of the stream, we saw these things that were the cappies, right? Cappy bearers that weren't, weren't going for much. And I was like, what the hell? And of course, whenever I look something up uh people are watching because it popped up in my timeline today where they announced we're excited to finally share some big news introducing the first ever fully self-service permissionless staking app for the entire say community and this is kind of cool creating more value for your collection with less time needed only with cappies utilize or dap to drip any on-chain coin that you'd like to reward your staking holders with as long as it's on-chain and has a CA you can stake for it. So I think this is a really cool tool that uh, was offered from them. And I just, you know, mentioned it yesterday. 
Get a follow up today with that sweet, sweet utility. LG2 set. This is maybe my favorite tweet on the timeline today. The replies on this 2021 post. So Loopify, <laughs> back in July of 21, says fast forward one year. What three projects are you investing in now that you believe will stay relevant this time next year? So this is a nifty little time capsule that we get to scour the comments and see what people had to say. So Universe Polymorphs, pretty sure that's gone. Larva Labs Mebits, that's still here. And the Medikey, Medikey is still here. Uh, Crypto Kitties and Artist One of Ones. Uh, I mean, Crypto Kitties, it seems like the rare ones are still going. And Artist One of Ones, I think, still have attention, but it's not, you know, it's not all over the timeline comparatively to what it was. Uh, Coco here saying Axie Infinity, Cyber Kongs, and Moon Cat Rescue, all three true. Gabrielle saying Ghosts. Yep, Cool Cats NFTs. Apparently, they changed their handle. And Art Blocks. Haven't seen a whole lot of Art Blocks on the timeline, but of course, for Squiggles and some of the other older ones, definitely have there. Uh, Manifold, Artifact, and Genies. Genies decided to go off the blockchain artifact just had a ton of fun but still around and manifold i think got like acquired by open or something crazy right and uh scrolling down here gorilla nemesis yeah i don't i don't <laughs> i don't think that one's still around deadhead zed run and board ape yacht club all those still around but it's, it's just funny to think you know back in 21 what ones would we have predicted to kick around now neo tokyo is one of the big web3 uh, players from the gaming side to obviously Elio and uh, CZ Becker, but I feel like I've just like not seen it on my timeline. And I don't know if X is suppressing things. Now, I, I don't even know if I follow these guys. I do. But this honestly was the first time that I seen it on my timeline and they were speaking with Infinity Gods and Infinity Gods again recently had a raise for that. But it's just interesting. I feel like certain things that are like massive, right? Like Neo Tokyo, it's got almost 200,000 followers. Why do I just not see this on my timeline? And again, as you guys know with the show, I am on my timeline all the time. All right, Famous F. This guy, listen, this guy better be watching the stream. This guy DMs me, right? And he's shilling his lens. He's like, man, hit me with a retweet. And I'm like, I don't even know what the hell this is. So he says, okay, I've honestly faded this whole blast stuff, but right now my whole feed is going to be diluted with Blaze ONG. So this seems like it's like a fantasy top. If you guys seen where there's all these influencers on the timeline and they're a part of this game. And if they tweet, they get more traction. Apparently this is kind of the same thing with that. Um, but so you'd better soft block me now three reasons why you should farm this 1.6 gold per view if you get retweeted by the main account Thirty thousand gold prize and free so again all the timeline we went from referral links to just people chilling on the timeline to get blast yo famous if you see this you're a beauty okay so this is this is what i was mentioning earlier for adam that was kind of like a hey f you guys but also okay we'll listen to you and they were sitting at four thousand mints for it and they were asking uh should we cut off the supply at five thousand five hundred fifty seven to match the og taco parent ordinal id or should we cut the supply at a clean five thousand again before they were like i'm not listening to you and now they are all over it okay so there was a metaverse round table today if you hadn't seen it had the founder of wilder world it had the futureverse founder it had uh sebastian from the sandbox it had i forget the individual's name but from uh decentraland and oh, i feel like there was another one i might be mistaken on that one and it was interesting to see because when you have these collections that are uh there we go you can kind of see some of the different ones here off to the side when you have these collections that are all kind of competing for the same thing. We say, oh, we want this open, interoperable world, these metaverses, it's all going to be, in, you know, interoperable, yada, yada, yada. And you see the way they talk, you see what they produce. It's very interesting to kind of feel like, hey, some of these are in like their lane of their own. Sometimes it's like the public speaker isn't too great. Sometimes they're insanely impressive. But as you can see here, so everybody tried. It seemed like to do like an avatar. So Aaron McDonald here from Futureverse. The Wilder World people, I thought this one was probably the best looking in terms of like high fidelity. None of them really had like good mouth movement with it. And then this one was from Decentraland with Decentraland. I feel like... I guess that's a part of it, but I haven't seen it in a while. I didn't really get that vibe off the rip here, but it did definitely feel like certain ones stood out comparatively to others. But one of the takeaways that I had was notice how there's 1,556 views. 
That's really good, right? Comparatively, that's really good. And then you go over to YouTube here, and for that one, it was 561. So let's combine them for a second and say that we had basically 2,000 people attend a discussion with some of the biggest metaverse founders in the space. So would you make the argument that we have roughly 2,000 people that are busy or at least entertained by the metaverse idea? Is that bullish? Is that bearish? Now, obviously, we can wait a couple hours, check it 24 hours later and see. But to me, it's crazy that we talk about how the space is being this huge, big entity. And again, for each of these collections, you know, they have... 50 to potentially like 300,000 followers on some of these different ones in terms of like Decentraland and Sandbox, who's had, you know, a lot longer time within the space on top of the hosts who have their own following. It just, you know, on the grand scope of things felt kind of small. Now, some takeaways here from Helen regarding that conversation. Takeaway from the panel chat with Sandbox, Decentraland, Wilder World, and Futureverse. Wilder World and Futureverse are the leaders this cycle. And also, I, I agree with this take, and I thought it was really good, so that's why we're using it. And shout out Helen if you see this. Uh, but no question. Respect to the other two, but I just don't see the innovation there. Quality difference, problem solving, etc. New kings in town. On AI, both Sand and Mana talking about problems that Futureverse have solved. And Aaron offers to work with them, and they seem surprised. Very clear that Futureverse, and especially the AI tech stack, is unknown to these other teams, let alone the broader market. A lot of the big user acquisition problems raised as challenges from the host. Featureverse have already solved payments, UX, etc. And again, unknown. And that, that was weird too. It was like the conversation felt like kind of odd. Like some of the questions were more like tech support-ish <laughs> type questions for people. And there was still like these issues. And you would think, okay, like after three plus years of these companies' protocols building within the space, you'd think that, you know, they'd be a little bit more flushed out. And basically, no one knows what Aaron has been up to. So a little marketing push and we're away. It can be frustrating seeing the market move and holding something that doesn't, but it's the curse of being early, I'm afraid. I watched the panel this morning and thought, holy smokers, they don't know, holy smokers again. Imagine when they finally do. The product and the problem solving is there. Now they just need to tell people about it. Good problem to have. Now, obviously, if you want to learn a little bit more about Futureverse, if you check out the video tab, we've got a whole bunch of different stuff, got playlists regarding it. Final shout out if you do want to find out a little bit more about real world assets. I'm speaking with experts, it's in the YouTube comment section. Would appreciate it if you guys give me a thumbs up. You guys have been absolutely killing on that. Appreciate uh, everybody swinging through on the chat here, Buffalo Space, and miss y'all. Distress Pickle and everybody watching uh, from the sidelines. I will see you tomorrow as per usual.